the colonel happened to be one of the last things we started to do, and we had started it not long before. And that's when Linus Torvalds came along. Linus or Linus? What's exactly your preferred pronunciation? Um, when I speak Swedish, it's Linus. When I speak Finnish, it's Linus. When I speak English, it's Linus. And I really don't care how people pronounce my name. But Linux is always Linux. He developed a kernel and got it working faster than we got ours working and got it to work very nicely and solidly. His kernel is called Linux. The initial goal was my very personal goal to be able to run a similar environment on my computer that I had grown used to at, at the university computers. And I could not find anything that suited me for that. Right? So having been doing computers for all my life, basically, at that point I just decided that I'll do my own. Um, most of the inspiration early on came from, from Sun OS, which was what um, I was using at the university at the time. Which university? University of Helsinki in Finland. From 1991 to about 1993 was really, I guess, the infancy period of Linux. That was when it was still only alpha or beta quality. It was relatively unstable. Although, even then, it was a good deal more stable than a lot of what are now called production operating systems. Linus used the traditional tried and true method of writing one program that does the job, and he got it to work quickly, in fact, faster than I would have thought was possible. The, the term for it is monolithic, which means that basically the OS itself is one entity, indivisible, um, while in a microkernel, a, the, the operating system kernel is actually uh, just a collection of servers that do different things and then they have a common protocol for doing communication between themselves. So why is it that if, if the GNU project had, had so much lead time to speak doing this, why, was, why is it that he was able to kind of come in at the tail end? Well, so to speak? we actually started the GNU herd not long before he started Linux. And as it happened, though, we chose a design that's a very advanced design in terms of the power it gives you, but also turns out to be very hard to debug. It, we decided to divide up the kernel, which traditionally had been one program, to divide it up into a lot of smaller programs that would send messages to each other asynchronously to, to communicate. And the problem is that that style of programming has a great deal of potential for bugs, which are often very hard to figure out because they depend on does this mess send does this program send this message before or after this one sends that message, and the result was it took us years to get the thing to work. What is Linux's relationship to the GNU project? Well, there's there's relationships to, to GNU on kind of multiple levels. One is just the philosophical level of, of thinking that making your source open is a good idea. When Linus developed the kernel, he wasn't doing it for the GNU project. He did it independently. And he released it independently, and we didn't know about it. But some of the people who did know about it decided to look for what else they could find to put together with that kernel to make a whole system. And they looked around, and lo and behold, everything they needed was already available. What good fortune, they thought, but actually there was no chance about it. They had found all the pieces of the GNU system, which was missing just the kernel. So when they put all that together, really they were fitting Linux into the gap in the GNU system, but they didn't know that. There's a lot of these programs um, done by the Free Software Foundation and done by other people like Linux, and there's a symbiosis between Linux and the programs so that the programs run on Linux and at the same time and they take advantage of Linux as a platform while Linux takes advantage of the programs by just being able to use them. What, what programs? Um, for the, the main one is actually the GNU C compiler which without a C compiler it would not have been possible to to make Linux or most of, of the open programs available. Uh, Linux uses the GPL 
And I agree with the kind of philosophy behind the GPL. Uh, that said, the GPL itself is is not a very pretty document, which is probably just because uh, no lawyers can ever be very pretty.